And so as we know, homosexuality is a sin that permeates our modern culture, that's uh, confronting the church aggressively. And I believe it's important that we understand what the Bible's perspective is on this matter of the perversion of sexual relations. So first, to be clear, this isn't a new position in scripture. Homosexuality has been forbidden by God uh, since the very uh, beginning of the Old Testament. We go back even to Leviticus 18.22. It says, quote, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. That word abomination is one of the strongest words in scripture. Uh, It's almost hard to uh, translate how intense that verbiage is. But it says, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10 says, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. End quote. Uh, 1 Timothy 1.10. The sexually immoral, quote, or comma, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine. Homosexuality is forbidden cover to back cover in scripture. Kevin DeYoung in his book, Homosexuality, writes, quote, from the first chapters of the Bible to the Torah to the New Testament, there is no hint that homosexuality is acceptable behavior for God's people. To think the Bible affirms homosexuality takes more than special pleading. It requires a denial of the plain teaching of scripture End quote. Okay, guys, just there's just a firm evidence, ultimate clarity when you look at the historical, cultural, grammatical context of homosexuality. There is no possible way that you can twist and do theological gymnastics to make homosexuality an accepted act for the Christian life. 